But the focus kind of this week, the SEC returns to the field. And there is no question which conference has dominated the college football landscape. Go back to 06. The SEC, they've won 10 national championships, half of those belonging to Alabama, two apiece from LSU and Urban's Florida Gators. But for the first time last season, Alabama, they missed out on the playoffs. Hmm. Think there's any motivation in Tuscaloosa right about now, Reg? I think there's a lot of motivation Ooh. for Alabama. I think they're going to unleash a uh, six-pack <laughs> on the first team that they play. They're going to beat the brakes off six them. Six-pack six pack of what? I, a six-pack of you know. I can't say the rest of it. You know, I want okay. them to say Oh, oh, no. Okay. I know where it's going. <laughs> but I'm big on Najee Harris, man. Yep. I think Najee Harris, uh, there's nobody like him right now in football. 6'2", 230 pounds. And this play, to me, embodies who Najee Harris is. This is a play out of the backfield, burst huh. route. Completely doesn't even mm. see the first defender. Jumps over the second guy. Mm. Last guy doesn't even have a shot to tackle him. But this is what he can do. He's 6'2", 230 pounds, but he's, he's shifty in the open field. He can run routes. He can put your linebacker on skates. And if you think about that, that is scary. This is another great option route that he had. And Tua was actually late finding him, and he's still walking to the end zone. So I think when you look at Najee Harris as a football player, I think he's the ultimate weapon. There's nobody like him in all of football, the NFL, college, none of that. And I just love what I see from him on the football field. Week in and week out, he's making highlight reel style plays. You spoke to him this week. Yeah. Is Z your Heisman front runner? He's my preseason favorite to win the Heisman Trophy this year. I yes. wow. know about Heisman's. Yeah, I do. I do know about Heisman. <laughs> Where is that Heisman? Coach right and now? I know about a Heisman in 2004, but that's that's for a story. That's for a story for another time. Um, his backfield mate. There's a new quarterback back there in Mac Jones, yeah. and and the era after Tua begins. And, and I'm really excited for his opportunity. Last year, he did start five games, including um, a bowl game against Michigan, and he proved that they really didn't miss a beat. He threw the ball downfield. He led that offense, which we know is explosive. You mentioned Najee Harris. Maybe they lean on the ground game a little bit more this year because of this schedule and the grind, but you talk about Smith, you talk about Waddle, Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator there, a loaded defense. Mac Jones has a great opportunity to pick up where Tua left off, lead this team to an SEC championship. I'm excited for him. And a great check down. Just, throw the, just check it down <laughs> to Najee Harris. You get in trouble, hey, just check it touchdown down. Touchdown or check down, baby. That's touchdown what we do. Touchdown or check down. Urban, the clarity of purpose I love that. Is inspirational. That is so good. You like that? Wow. I did that. That is just, that is just for you. That, are, that is just for you. So uh, the SEC what? East. Yes, sir. You have the big three. Florida, Tennessee, Georgia. Georgia is going through a complete transition offensively without spring practice. New quarterback from pro to spread. I think they're going to be struggling a little bit, certainly early in the year. And in, mm -hmm. in the SEC 10-game schedule, Florida, returning quarterback, returning system, good culture. Tennessee's trending up. I think they get to Atlanta. I think Trask has to become not a good – right now, he's a good quarterback. You can't say – I went back and watched a lot of film on him. He's not a great quarterback yet. If he has a great year, we're going to talk about the Florida playing Alabama in that SEC championship in Atlanta. I think the difference for Trask is he's a great situational player. You go back to last season, completed 67% of his passes on third down, red zone. 17 touchdowns to only two interceptions. The difficulty for him this year is going to be transitioning where he doesn't have Freddie Swain. He doesn't have Van Jefferson. Those guys have moved on to the NFL. So how does he kind of restart uh, and develop that chemistry? But the other side of today's matchup to me is a really intriguing story. And Matt, <laughs> I know you've been waiting for lane this one. Lane train, baby. The lane train <laughs> lane coming, train. baby. And here's the thing is, I think a lot of people aren't sure what to expect right. Ole Miss yeah. this year. Here's the deal. If you go back to Lane Kiffin at FAU, they led Conference USA in rushing two of the three years he was there. They are going to run the football. Mm. John Rice Plumley, he led the SEC in rushing last season for any player, not just a quarterback, <laughs> any player. So you're going to see a heavy dose of the rushing attack led by this man. You may even see both quarterbacks, yep. which may be tough for Florida to prepare for. So I think Ole Miss keeps this one close. I know defensively there might be a little <laughs> some issues on that side of the ball, but you know, SEC opened up the season. There could be some rust. There could be some struggles. So I think Ole Miss, I, I think Blaine, the Lane train can keep this one close. Uh, they're definitely not going to keep it close. But I like, <laughs> I like Jerry and Ely. Play for Lane? I love, yeah, I play with Lane. Yeah, yeah. what happened then? 
What happened? Well, that was a different era. This is now we're talking about Lane in the SEC. Well, you would love his offense now. They're toting the rock. I do love his offense now. And, and that's why I want to talk about Jaron Ely because I think having a running back, like you talk about Plumley, yeah. then you factor in a running back like, like, uh, like Jaron Ely, and he's just going to give you that continuity that you're looking for from a running back. I think Lane's got to lean on a run game because they did have a top 10 rushing offense last year. I think if he can do those things, yeah, he can probably keep it close. Get if he train. can keep the Get football the Come out on. of the offense. I'm not saying they win. I'm saying they keep yeah. it close. Like maybe yeah. like, well, under two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's not close. Re- Re- Reggie's fast enough. He can jump on the lane train at a later stop. He'll That's get right. there eventually. <laughs> He'll jump on and off. All whenever, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, Matty, you remember year one to year two as a starting quarterback for you? Yeah, except mine was in my third year in college. <laughs> the quarterback you say was his first year on campus, Bo Nix. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but there's still that change from year one to year two. So does that give you some belief in Bo at Auburn? That, well, that's uh, – Brady and I know this. Year two as a quarterback in this system is huge. You know, last year he got thrown into the mix. I think he showed flashes, especially week one against Oregon. We saw – Coach, we, we nailed in the competitive fire. You look at him in the huddle. He has that it factor. Uh, and he, he showed flashes last year. The, the concern for me – when you go against Florida, Georgia, and Alabama last year, and your completion percentage is 45%, you throw more interceptions than touchdowns, yes, it's expected as a true freshman. That's where he has to improve. Mm-hmm. He has to take care of the football better this year, and he has to take care of the football better against those teams. This is a difficult schedule. Auburn loses a lot of parts, in my opinion, on both sides of the ball. That's why I think it might be more difficult for him. Um, but there's no denying his talent. He's a really good football player. I, I think the one thing just going through it as a true freshman to a sophomore is when you have continuity of assist and that helps. Chad Morris comes in right. as their OC. It's figuring out that relationship. You know, what is he like to call after you throw a pick? Is he going to be conservative that next drive or is he going to throw the football more? It's those sorts of things you got to figure out. It's, it's tough without, you know, much practice right. this offseason. Remember, SEC 10-game schedule, never in the history of that conference they've had to do that. The whole premise of the SEC has been protect the national championship. Play an FCS game right near the end of the season. Mm-hmm. That's where a school like Auburn, a team like Auburn with a bone next. I think, once again, the top teams are going to have two losses. You put Auburn right in there. And remember one other thing. SEC has the toughest non-conference uh, environments. That's gone. Yeah. There's not going to be fans there anymore. So the Auburn home advantage, the Alabama home field advantage, which I've been in, those are awful to go play at. Mm. They're there. Now it's going to be like a scrimmage environment. That's going to take so much discipline on that home team to get up and get ready to go play. Let's welcome in our insider right now, Bruce Feldman. The SEC, as they typically do, has a cadre of impactful freshmen. Who's primed to make an immediate impact? And let's start with Alabama. Right. Now, Nick Saban's had a lot of great defensive players, Rob. Remember this name, Will Anderson. He is a 240-pound linebacker. Coaches tell me that he has the quickest get-off of anybody on the entire team. They love his motor. The other thing that's really impressed them is how quickly he has learned this system, and that is not easy for freshmen. On the other side of the ball, I got somebody for you, and this is an LSU freak tight end named Eric Gilbert. He was a huge recruit, 6'5", 250, legit 4'5", 40 guy. Even better, they think, than the hype, and the hype was huge. Here's something to keep in mind. They say he reminds them of Calvin Johnson. This is what's really interesting about this. Calvin Johnson had his best years in the NFL in Detroit when Scott Linehan was the Lions offensive coordinator. Scott Linehan, by the way, now is LSU's new passing game coordinator. Funny how things like that work out. Bruce, thanks for the intel. Big noon kickoff, Saturdays at 11 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app.